Freedom Fighters, I'm back with another one. Well, it's going to be a special report. I mean, I've been doing videos usually on Fridays, kind of doing like a weekly wrap-up on news and current events, but figure I'd get to you early on a Monday to cover all the uh, stuff that was going over, going down over the weekend. Well, are we in World War III, and are you preparing for it? Well, you sh you better be. Um, you know, the Pope already said, like, what, like a year ago that we're in World War III? And you remember Biden even whispering into the mic, uh, you know, if we send tanks and uh, F-15s and fighter jets, that's World War III. Well, guess what he said? Um, but yeah, you know, I wanted to take another angle at this and a different perspective you know, I heard all the TV shills and politicians doing their normal song and dance of how we need to go be world police and the neocons are all in for forever wars. The left is doing their, you know, normal thing. Let's send everybody money and um, the, the whole song and dance. But mainly what I haven't seen anybody talking about is how this affects America. And that's what I'm always at. I'm America first, and I'm looking out for America. And this is what's coming to America. Um, I haven't seen a lot of people talking about it like this, but this is the failure of globalism. Um, and this is what's coming to America with open borders. A lot of people have been, you know, talking about this, and I'll have to do a separate video about what's coming, but... People have been asking me for a while now, what's coming? You know, what do you think is coming? And I've said it so many times that I've actually got tired of typing it out now. So I usually just tell people in the comments, like, it's going to be so bad. Like, you can't even fathom the horrors that are coming. Like, it's, it's going to be so bad. You know, I just, I can't even type it out anymore. And, you know, recently I got onto a stream uh, with Jonathan Picone. You know, and he asked me what I thought was coming to. And it's just absolute hell. That's what's coming. Absolute hell is coming to the streets of America. And it's going to look a lot of like what just happened in Israel. And they're already here. Um, the sleeper cells are coming in by the thousands. You hear the reports. It's thousands of day, a day. Thousands and thousands and thousands, and it, it ends up being millions. Um, you know, there's the gang members, your normal suspects, but then there's literal military. You got Chinese, um, you've read the reports of them uh, busting a Chinese police station in New York. Um, they've got bio labs in California. I mean, they're already here. Um, you got Haitians and Russians and Muslims and everything, literally everything under the sun pouring through the border at a rate of thousands and thousands. So if you don't think you can't wake up one morning and just shit hits the fan, cause that's what just happened for them, you know? And do you remember where you were at on the 11th on that September day in 2001? Where it's just another day, you're going to work, you drop the kids off at school, and then boom, your whole world is shaken. Everything changes. And that's what happened. You know, it was just another Saturday morning. I think they actually got done celebrating some religious holiday the day before. Uh, and it was like a 50 anniversary of some war. And they wake up that morning, and they're right back at it. So, I mean, that's what's headed to us. You're going to wake up one morning and everything has changed. Um, and this is the number one reason you don't disarm. I haven't seen anybody taking that stance really either. I mean, I was only really looking at this Saturday morning and throughout Saturday. But um, this is absolutely the reason you never, never, ever disarm. You don't give up your guns. Um, I mean, you saw the videos. I'm not going to play them. 
but imagine your wife or your daughter getting pulled out of the uh, out of the house, you know, drugged by the hair on her head to go face unknown horrors. Well, I mean, you know what's going to happen to them, but I'm not going to say that either cuz that totally uh censors videos if you say that word. But um yeah, never give up your guns. Um your government can't keep you safe. If again, if this isn't the 100% example of, you know, they give them up because it makes them feel safe and they get the perception of safety because the, all these disarmed countries will say, well, we don't have the stuff in America. Well, the reason half of the stuff we have in America is because we don't, you know, take care of our problem, which I'll have to do a whole nother video. But yeah, we have a bunch of people running around in this country that shouldn't be here and they're the ones committing all the crime. But yeah, the government can't keep you safe. Only you. You are in charge of your safety and your family's safety. And if these people had their guns and, you know, their wife was packing, their daughter was packing, uh, their sons were packing, their uncle was packing, you know, the whole family unit and everyone in the house was packing, and these guys are going door to door pulling people out of their houses, they could put a stop to it. But... Nope. They sat there and got slaughtered in their homes because they were disarmed by their own government. And the false promises of we're here to keep you safe. Nobody's keeping you safe. You're on your own. And that's been a message on this channel from the beginning. You are on your own. And I mean, what are you going to tell them as they're getting pulled out of the house? They're like, Daddy, Daddy, you didn't tell me about this. You didn't prepare me for this. I didn't know this was going to happen. Well, honey, we we were progressives. And we gave up our guns. And uh, we love open borders. And we, we're, we're globalists, you see, sweetie? And we, we invited in all the refugees. And we gave up our guns. And uh, I'm just a soy little bitch. I, is that what you're going to tell her as she's hauled off? I mean, absolutely pathetic, man. Sorry, I got uh, interrupted there, but yeah, man, uh, I just don't understand what goes through these people's heads, and they never seem to learn. And, and, and what baffles me even more is when they double down on the insanity. Um, like, you think this has changed their mind about open borders at all? Uh, of course not. You think this has changed their mind on their stance of the Second Amendment? Of course not. And they double down on this craziness. I mean, these people just like, I don't even know what world they're living in. It's a complete false reality. It's just, it's clown world. Um, and, and, you know, call them what you want, whether they're liberals or progressives or, I kind of just like the term leftist. It's just kind of a blanket term for all of them. But, um... You know, they'll do these things. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the case uh, Molly Tibbetts. And she was a girl in, I believe, Ohio. But she got kidnapped by an illegal. And again, I won't say the word, but uh, he had his way with her. And then chopped her up and threw her into a cornfield. And, you know, she was this liberal activist and all this. And then her dad gets on TV and gives this interview. Like, oh, we don't... Uh, blame anybody uh, we don't blame the migrant communities and we love our illegals and all that um, just like uh, you know the AJ song we love our Somalis oh they're so good oh they're so sweet um, and they just always double down on the insanity um, you recently had a case where Scott Adams was tweeting with this uh, liberal activist on Twitter. And he said, if you continue to live around these people uh, in Philadelphia uh, and, you know, support all these um, policies, you know, a good chance you're probably going to end up dead by the end of the year. And he's like, no, it's not that bad. There's, it's not really going on. Well, guess what happened to him? He's dead. Um, and it happens over and over. Um, there was another guy, he was Antifa, 
and a BLM supporter, and he's like a commie. He has a Mark sticker on his page or something like that. Um, and he's going out, walking the streets of New York, date night with his girlfriend, and ends up getting shanked dead in the streets. And then his girlfriend and their friends are um, having like a, uh, a GoFundMe account, and they're supporting the killer. They're saying he's the actual victim here. You know, because of black oppression, um, he had to do it, right? Um, this, the broken system failed him and left him at a point where, you know, he had no other options. It's always some craziness like this, man. I, I, I don't understand these people and yeah, I never will. I, I just can't be on that wavelength. But, um, you know, another thing everyone was talking about, how this was a colossal intelligence failure. Um, you know, this was obviously well-coordinated. Um, I haven't heard any official numbers of how many people were in on it, but, I mean, I've seen trucks full of 20, you know, 30 men. I saw a group walking in the streets with looked like a little, small little platoon, you know, maybe 50 people. It looked like a little small army, um, you know, and you got people flying in on uh, hang gliders or parasails, whatever they call them. Um, but who funded that? You know, where's that money coming from? And, and and you know, how many people were involved? Probably a couple hundred, if not a thousand. I mean, did no one pick up on this? And, you know, here in America, everyone's too afraid to join a militia because they're like, it's all infiltrated by feds. Uh, meanwhile, you got groups over there within these, these communities don't snitch on each other like we do here in America. You know, if you're in a group here in America and you say you're going to do something, everyone's like, you know, well, you already have four or five feds on your team. Uh, they rat you out, but then everyone else will rat you out too in the group. You know, in these communities, they're all for it. They're like, okay, you know, we're all in on it. You know how much this word had to travel? And it never got out to anybody. Uh, within these mosques and everything like that. And, you know, this was probably even whispered and talked about within the halls of government. You know, in Iran and all these other Arab countries. And again, when I said who's funding it, well, you know who's funding it. Uh... You know, the O'Biden administration, even back in Obama's day uh, with the Iran nuclear deal, uh, the United States basically got blackmailed. Oh, no, we won't build nuclear weapons. Just send us pallets full of untraceable cash and then we won't do it. And then just a little while ago, uh, they orchestrated a deal where they no uh, negotiated for some uh, captives or whatever and gave them six billion dollars. So yeah, they have unlimited money now to fund all kinds of attacks. Again, will this change the the liberals' mind? No, the IQ's too low. Will they ever figure it out? Will they ever come to reality of the situation we're living in? Probably not. But uh, you and I are going to have to figure out. We're living in reality. We're going to have to deal with the consequences. So... Get prepared for it. That's the best you can do. Um, until the next one, you know what I always say. Uh, we are on our own. No one's coming to save us. So get right with God because only he can save you. Freedom Fighters out.